Film Kid is one of the most slept on decks I have ever seen. With the recent victory of Luffy and Arlington and Whitebeard still being one of the most represented decks, I think there's a lot of potential for Film Kid in this meta. Film Kid essentially functions like Green Zoro, and your hand size by the end of the game is absolutely ridiculous. Before I show how to play the deck in the deck list, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe and turn that bell on if you haven't already. Also, follow me on Twitter. I'm so close to getting to 1100 followers, so please help me achieve that goal. And with that being said, let's go ahead and look at the Film Kid deck. As I already mentioned, this deck is full on on the Film Tribal. Like, pretty much, I think more than like 50% of this deck, I, I don't know if that's true, don't worry about the math, but I think more than like 50% of it is probably like Film Cards. And since this deck ideally likes to go second, Bonnie is a very, very powerful turn one play as it can search out Zoro here for a turn two play or it can search out Luffy, uh, which is our most powerful turn four play. So Bonnie is a very essential unit. If you do use Bonnie going, if you do see Bonnie going first, there is like a pretty fair chance that you may not like that. You just may not use it until the very uh, end of the game, unless you do decide to tap Bonnie turn two and swing seven with lead. But um, generally, Bonnie's a very good uh, going second turn one play, but it's a lot more mid early on going first. Here's so we have Chopper. This is just a 2k counter. Um, this is important as a 2k counter as it's film, which means it's searchable off of our Nami here, which makes it uh, very significant as a 2k counter. Next up, we have Bartomello. This card is extremely goaded in this deck. It allows you to restand three cost Nami, which... Y'all will see three cards on me later, but it allows us to resend this card in the early game, and it allows us to resend our seven cost Luffy in the late game in order to turn like this card into kind of a pseudo seven cost kid. So this card is very, very valuable. So if you pull it out of your event packs and you haven't sold it yet, consider using it for this deck. Next up, we have Scratchman and Pooh. This is just a 2k counter. Obviously, it's Supernova, which is the reason why we have four of this and not four of Ezo, because we get Supernova means it's search for Bonnie. So we have Ezo here. Ezo is literally just another 2k counter. Earlier versions of this deck did use like Law and Hawkins, but those cards um, have ended up being like kind of ineffective in this type of film kid deck, at least like according to the main film kid guy right now so Ezo is just extra copies of 2k counters so there are a total of 11 2ks in this deck which is huge Usopp is just a 5k attacker that can be called off of brook so this card is absolutely goaded next up we have nami this is another one of like the key cards of the deck since this deck likes to go second this card is a extremely powerful turn to play as you can just field it grab a card and then the following turn you can swing with it again and get another card so it provides a lot a lot of value and as i said combining this early on with like bardo just like restand it just to make sure it's safe is very very strong and it's also uh one of the best targets to call off of brook in general next up we have brook this card is really good for swarming the board like even if you just play it turn two in order to play like um like a brook and like a usopp or something that's very strong or if you play it turn three which where you have six on you can play like brook play nami get nami effect off has a very lot of useful cases and it swarms the board when used with seven cost luffy which is pretty insane like all of a sudden you only have like one unit on the board then you play seven cost luffy you play brook brook play something else and all of a sudden you have like four to five units on the board so it is really insane Next up, we have four cost uh, Zoro. This is just another film unit. And it's also, it's 6K body is also very, very powerful. Pretty monumental in the white beard matchup and just very solid card in general. Next up, we have Frankie. Frankie is just obviously another film card. So search off Nami. And it is a very strong turn three play uh, when you are going first. It's also a pretty good turn three play going second. But going second, you normally have better plays such as like Brook into Nami and stuff like that. Then we have seven cost Luffy, another key card of the deck. This is basically the card that makes the whole deck work. Regardless of going first or second on like turn four, you play this card and all of a sudden you have like a gazillion cards on the board. Like kind of, as I said earlier, you play Luffy, Luffy plays Brook, then Brook plays Nami. And like when you see it happen, it's ridiculous. Like the amount of advantage you get out of nowhere is just absolutely ridiculous. Then last we have eight events. For the eight events, we have four Paradise Waterfall and we have four Gibson. Paradise Waterfall is very, very good for using with 7 cost Luffy because if our Luffy's rested, now we can restand it or we can like block with Luffy, use Waterfall, then all of a sudden we just got a 4k guard out of one Don. So, very effective card. Then we have Gibson. 
Gibson's very good for resting Marco against like bow periods and stuff like that, or it just shifts the opponent's lethal against like Zoro or stuff like that in general because you are resting a unit on their board. Now we will talk about how to play Foam Kid. So ideally you want to go second with this deck, unless you're against like Red or Doppelmingo. My advice for this deck is don't swing with bodies early on, unless there's bodies on your opponent's board to clear or you're building advantage with Nami. So you generally want to play cards and kind of just leave it standing. You really want to land Luffy on turn four and then you want to start, that's when you want to start pressuring your opponent. Um, I would have your life generally be like two or three when you start, um, when you start swinging, like, don't be afraid to go down in life. As I said, this is effectively, like, green Zoro. So you just, like, eat all those hits early on. Then you just start clapping your opponent out of nowhere. If your opponent tries to swing at board, you protect it. If your opponent tries to swing face, then you can protect it once you have finally gotten down to that two to three life mark. I will say I am generally at, like, two life. I do generally let myself go, to, go down to two life. But three could be more correct. But I'm pretty sure two is the answer based on, like, um, how I've been playing for the time being like two seems like a very very good life amount to be at with this deck um, And that's pretty much it for how to play this film Luffy deck I will say that this deck is I think this deck is especially strong as I mentioned at the start of the video into like uh, Very strong into like Luffy and very strong against Whitebeard as well. I do think the law matchup is a little sketchy, but potentially better than the Acos kid matchup just depends like how you play and then i do think that this deck is also a lot worse into a cost kit as well but i will say that a cost kit hasn't really been featured in the na meta so far like there's barely any a cost kit players so you could definitely just pop off with this full luffy deck here's an earlier version of the same uh luffy deck according to kai here who is uh who is in with the japanese community so uh he just showed this list here this has four law kind of as i mentioned earlier um people are saying that the law wasn't or the dude who like basically is uh doing well with the deck uh determined law to not be too effective so they did kind of like swap it out for easels which that's been doing really good so far i actually had another person on this tweet i think i'll go ahead and show it briefly yeah this person said do you play bouncer law like he felt really useless so um you can try out this list that i just mentioned if you want to i haven't tested it out yet but it seems like the block law may not be too impactful um, if you are expecting a lot of ACOS kit or you do need to out ACOS kit, I think it may be worth running like some copies of Hawkins. Hawkins is such about Bonnie, so you can probably run like two Hawkins and then just pray to God you see it off Bonnie or something like that. But um, I think there's definitely opportunities there. And then I have to give a huge shout out to Teru here for basically putting this deck on the map. As you can see in this 3v3 battle, he went 8-0. And, oh. and this is this has no set 3 cards in it. It's insane. Bro beat Ace, he beat set 3 Zoro, he beat Katakuri, and then he beat a bunch of Zoros. So if he's beating a bunch of set 3 Zoros, I think that this deck can be um, set to Zoro as well. As I said, this deck has an incredible matchup into Luffy. I haven't tested it too much into Zoro yet, but my impression is that if you have an incredible Luffy matchup, you probably have a pretty good Zoro matchup as well. But that is something I do actually need to test out yet. But this is it for Film Kid. I'm telling y'all, give this deck out a try, man. I do really think it's strong. Um, I did play it on stream last night. I streamed last night. So if you want to go into the live section of my channel and check out some of the gameplay, you can find that by going to the very end of this stream on that video. That's it for the Film Kid deck. And with that being said, I will catch you on the next one. Peace.